Hello, I'm Alex Krasner. I'm the GA at the Virtual Environment Studios at the Libraries of Virginia Tech. And uh, today we're going to be learning how to make pass through uh, applications for your Oculus Quest headset. Uh, that is almost like an augmented reality experience inside of the Quest using the cameras to show us the outside world inside of virtual reality. We're going to start today by uh, getting Unity set up for our pass-through applications. We're going to go over hand interactions, that's including grabbing and distance selection. So a couple disclaimers. There's not going to be any scripting today. Everything will be no code whatsoever. However, this workshop does not cover the basics of Unity. If you're coming here and you want to make an app but you know nothing about Unity, you're going to want to go to my other video that I've already made that just covers the basics of Unity. It kind of tells you how the layout works and everything. And yeah, that should be available on a similar site. Um, or uh, it's potentially if someone shared you a link to this, maybe they shared you the link to the basics one as well. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get onto the workshop. Okay, so the first step before we can even open Unity is that you need to make it so that you can connect your Quest to your computer so that we can push apps to it. Unfortunately, this requires you to put together a developer account. And to get a developer account, you're going to go to developer.oculus.com and sign up. Uh, on the right, there should be a button to sign up. You'll sign up. And once you have signed up, you're probably going to want to scroll down here on the same site, developer.oculus.com, click submit, and you should be brought to a page here where it will ask you to uh, give it some verifying information, a phone number or a credit card. And if you would really like to preserve your privacy, I would recommend maybe using a website like privacy.com to create a fake credit card that you can access with your real credit card and providing that instead as your verification. Uh, one thing, however, is that you will need to make sure the same account that you are using your Oculus or Meta headset with is the same account that you sign into for your developer account. So it will probably ask you to sign into Facebook with an account. If you've already linked your thing with Facebook, you have to use that account. If you haven't, then maybe you'll be able to make a side developer account. Uh, after that, you will need to make an organization. I would just name your organization. Uh, it'll be up here on the left. And I would just create an organization with the same name as yourself. Uh, and that way you shouldn't have any conflict. Every organization has to have a unique name. Think of it almost like a username. Uh, it's the name that would show up in the app store if you were to publish your app. So do with that information what you will. You need to have your developer account verified and you need to have an organization that you are within. Uh, the organization can kind of just be whatever you make up though. And once you've gone through making all of that, your account will be ready. You will next need to go onto the app on your phone and enable developer mode. You can probably find tutorials for this online, but it's as simple as going into the options, going to devices, and you should see a developer mode that pops up as soon as you, as soon as you have created a developer account. So once all of that is done, your headset should be set up such that you can actually develop for it. And I'm going to close this now. And let's get into Unity. So once you have your headset set up for developer mode, we can start developing. So I'm going to open Unity, opening Unity Hub. And with Unity Hub now opened, we can see you know all of the projects that you have. You want to make sure for this that you are on 2020, uh, prob preferably the latest version of the LTS or long-term support version of 2020. Today we're going to use 2020. You can most likely do all of these things we're about to do today 
in 2021. However, due to stability reasons, I'm going to stick with 2020 for the tutorial today. Anyway, uh, once we have this one installed though, which I've already installed, if you don't have it installed, you'd go to install editor and you would choose it from here. Uh, one important thing is when you're installing the editor, a page will pull up that looks like this. And if you have already installed it, you can just pull up that page by clicking on the gear next to your install and going to add modules. It is critical for building to an Oculus Quest to have Android build support and all of these other tools, the SDK and the OpenJDK. You gotta check that box. It's about two extra gigabytes of download. So you need to make sure you have those. If you don't have that, you will not be able to build to Oculus Quest. I would also recommend turning on Windows build support IL2 CPP because if you have this on, you can preview the view of what your app's going to be. However, we will not be doing that today due to pass-throughs restrictions. Uh, when you use pass-through video, you need, it does not show up whenever you are recording it and that includes through the debug screen in Unity. So anyways, make sure you have this installed and you will be good to go. So with that installed, I'm gonna go to projects and make a new project. Let's go with uh, 3D always and name it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call mine uh, Quest 2 Workshop Pass Through. You can name it whatever you'd like. Make sure it's saved somewhere that you can keep track of and create the project. So when Unity finally opens, you will see something like this. Maybe you've changed up your layout. Maybe it looks slightly different, um, but you should see something like this. Again, I have gone over all of the UI components here and what all of these buttons do in a previous video. Um, if there was a way for me to link it, I would ask that someone adds a link to the video right here so that you can go and click and check it out. So anyway, what we want to go to is the asset stores. The first thing we want to do, we need to get the Oculus integration. And to get the Oculus integration, we're going to go to the asset store. It's a tab right here. The tab may not show up. If the tab does not show up, you're going to click window asset store and the tab will show up. But in the tab, all it does is just opens your browser. So here we are at the asset store. To get the Oculus integration, we just want to type Oculus integration. I have found that this site has a tendency to be kind of laggy. Uh, so when you type something in and it doesn't immediately load, do not worry. That's kind of common. Um, in this case, we just searched it and <laughs> and it didn't even show up. So that's exactly as I'm saying. Sometimes this site just kind of glitches out. If it does that, type it again. Oculus integration <clears throat> and here we go so the top thing that shows up will always be an ad ignore it here it is right here oculus integration you'll see it says i've already purchased it but it's free uh, so when you get to this page it should show to you that uh it'll say add to my assets or something uh, to that likeness if it doesn't say that one important thing to make sure you have is that your unity account <clears throat> you need the same unity account signed in on the browser and in unity itself so if we check up here in the top corner you'll see that you can sign into an account you want to make sure it's the exact same account signed in here that you have signed in here so given that you have them both signed in, you'll click add to assets. And then afterwards you'll click open in unity. A pop-up might show up here saying open in unity. You can click either or all it will do is open the package in unity. And we can see it here now, right here. It may not always start highlighted, so it could just show up in here. Look for Oculus integration and when you click on it, you will likely see a button prompting you to download it. 
you'll download it and then you will import so now I'm gonna click import and when the loading finishes you will see this screen all you want to do is click import again it's basically it's pulled together all the different files that you're about to import so you want to choose to import them all you're going to notice a theme today that there will be a lot of waiting for bars and that's just given that's how it's going to go uh, there may even be if your computer is fairly slow this waiting could total to around 45 minutes of total waiting through the whole thing we're doing in this video today I will be skipping over all of my waits so you will not have to wait through the six minute or more wait times on my end but you will have to deal with however long it takes on yours so sit back I don't know, pull up a video on your phone have some fun play a little game listen to some music chill out while the loading bars do their thing all right so when the import completes this will appear what you have to do is click yes use open XR okay and then it will ask that you need to restart when you click this restart however it will instead pull up this where you have to choose upgrade and then it will ask you to restart again. When you click this restart, it will actually restart Unity. Don't worry, everything will be as it was when you reopen. All right, so we have finished importing the Oculus integration package. What this means is we just finished the first step. There's a few more steps to go and a few more waits. So on to the next one. The next thing we have to do is we have to change which platform we are building to. So by default, it's going to build to PC. We don't want that. We're going to build to Android, which is what the Quest runs on. So I'm going to click Build Settings under File, File Build Settings. In fact, I have just turned on a new feature so that when I click, I'll show you this right now. When I click, normally it'll be yellow. When I right click, it'll be blue. So I hope that will help you throughout this next part of the process. I'm gonna go to File, Build Settings. And uh, while we're at it, let's click Add Open Scenes. And now, you see right now it's set to build for PC, Mac, Linux, but that's not what we want. We want it to build for Android. So we're gonna click on Android here. You will not be able to do this unless you have installed that package that we, we checked on earlier in the Unity Hub. But given that you have installed all those Android tools, you'll see all this stuff here. You can leave it. What matters is we need to switch the platform to Android. So I'm going to do that now. This will take a while. It can take around six minutes or so on an average laptop. Uh, it just depends how fast your processor is. Who knows? By the time you're viewing this, maybe maybe processors have had some massive jump in performance. So, but this uh, this will take some time. Once again, go get a drink, <laughs> go uh, pull up a game on your phone, and uh, chill out until it's done. Okay, so once that wait is done. <laughs> It's time to move on to yet another wait. Uh, to get to that, we're going to click on Player Settings, this little button down here. And we are going to go to the bottom where it says XR Plugin Management. We're going to click Install XR Plugin Management. This could take a little bit. Generally, it doesn't take as long as the other things so far, though. All right, so once we have installed XR Plugin Management, the next thing we have to do is make sure that your tab is set to Android over here. And you're gonna click this Oculus integration. So let's click it. And this one could take quite a while. So I don't know, maybe go get some snacks now. 
All right, so once that completes, you've got an option here. Under the PC tab, the one that looks like kind of a screen, desktop tab, you could also enable Oculus in here. If you do, it means that you would be able to preview your app through the debug view over under, under here, uh, up here in game. Um, however, with pass through, that's not very helpful generally, since the quest will not pass its video feed into Unity. So the only real upside of doing it is, I guess, to test out your tracking quickly and easily. However, it really won't take that long to just build the app to your device over and over again. But you will miss out on bugs if you were trying to write code. So it's a trade-off you can decide on. Today, I'm not going to check the box, but you could if you were interested in debugging. So the next step will be to go up here to player, project settings, and down to other settings. It may not already be opened. It may just look like this. You're going to want to open other settings and the very first option, rendering color space. We're going to set this from gamma to linear. You'll see when you click on it that it warns you this could take some time, and it will. This may be the longest wait, but I'm going to click it. And it's important that we switch this to linear because the Quest can only run applications in a linear color space. It's part of why it runs so efficiently, even though it doesn't have some crazy computing things in it. So anyway, this again can take an average of like six six and a half minutes but for some people it may take more it may, it may even take 15. who knows all i do know is go do something fun and i'll be right here when you're done all right that's your last wait we finished all of the really long wait times of this pro process and it's on to finally putting this stuff together. There's only one thing left though in these menus. But you're going to scroll down in other settings until you find keep scrolling down until you find configuration. In configuration we want to change two things real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, you also want to double check something so uh, let's uh, let's double check it real quick right here just make sure that this is set to API level 23 Android 6.0 Marshmallow, it should do that automatically when you install the Oculus integration, but just pointing that out. All right, we want to change the scripting backend under configuration to IL2 CPP. And then we want to go down to where it says target architectures, and we need to change it from ARM v7 to ARM64. And that's it. That's all the weird settings we got to deal with. Um, at least for now in this menu. So, I guess in, in general for the menus, that's, that's, that's it. So, closing those two windows, we're back to here. And the next step is we want to get rid of this main camera. We're going to be using a VR camera for this, or an Oculus uh, OVR rig. And so we don't need another camera. So let's get rid of that. Just gonna right click on it and click delete. Okay. Time to add the sample camera rig that we're gonna be using today. Uh, this is something that's pre built by Oculus in order to kind of give us an easy way to get started in making all these interactions work. So, all we gotta do is type in. Oculus into your project into your project section. You want to type in Oculus into her, and by this point you can already it's already here. It's this one that we're looking for, one that kind of looks like hands fused together with controllers. That's what we're gonna pick, and it's called Oculus Interaction Sample Rig Prefab. 
So we're going to take that, grab it, drag it up, and just drop it over here on the left under the hierarchy. And boom, there it is. We've got our new VR camera sets. Everything's here. Uh, though, we're going to be making some changes to this. And because we're going to be making changes to a prefab, I always recommend whenever you're changing a prefab in Unity to right-click it, go to Prefab, and Unpack Completely. What this means is when we change settings about this camera, it's not going to affect the base like the original version that we got. So let's say we wanted, let's say we messed something up and we wanted to go back and make some changes again in the future. Uh, like we messed something up so bad we just kind of want to start from scratch. If we don't unpack, it's going to change this object in here, the one that we just got this prefab. It will permanently change that one if we edit the prefab up here. But if we unpack it, it kind of un wraps all of the parts from being a prefab so now they're all just objects and unity so you can see uh, in the oculus interaction sample rig uh, object we have two children an ovr camera rig and an input ovr ovr camera rig is what you may expect it is the camera but it also includes the tracking space and the hands or at least the uh things to show where they are. You'll notice when we expand, we have a hand and a controller. Uh, there's a prefab for the controller to show that. And this is a prefab thing for the hand so that it can keep track of the finger positions and other things. Um, all you really need to know here is that that's what this is, is the camera rig. The hands are in here and they will move around automatically. All the scripts are already handling everything you need. Uh, we will be making a change in here though. I'm going to go to center eye anchor and we're going to change this background right here. Change this background from blue to black. And basically what that is is when the camera renders, if it doesn't see anything, it will color the background whatever this color is that we've given. And in pass-through mode, it always considers it as not seeing anything. So it, it will color everything you see through the cameras a little bit blue if we had it set that way. Now it's black, which means it won't add any color. If you wanted to somehow color it for some reason, you could set that here. All right. So we've done that. Again, it's under center eye anchor. So now that we've set that up, we should mess with the settings a little bit. There's a couple of things we have to change. So under OVR camera rig object, you'll see there's a whole lot of components here. And the one we really care about is OVR manager, the very first one. In OVR manager, we want to first change the color gamut to quest, because that's what we're going to be working on. Next, under quest features, there's a whole lot of different options here. We're we will soon turn on pass-through to do the pass-through parts. But first, I'm going to start us off in just a virtual reality app. Let's say you were watching this hoping to build an application that is just, you know, a VR app for the Quest. Then I want to be able, I want you to see how to do that as well. So we're going to start with that and then we will build the pass-through onto it. All right. And we're going to start with hand tracking. So we're going to click here under hand tracking support, change that to hands only. And uh, you can leave the hand tracking frequency to low. If you have your quest running on version 39 and above, low hand tracking, low frequency hand tracking will provide the highest accuracy at the moment, at the moment of, of writing, of making this video, that is the case that may change in the future but right now they've really optimized their low frequency hand tracking model and their high frequency model has gotten a little bit more finicky so that's just to know right now uh it could change and it likely will change but anyway that's what we will leave that on leave the rest of it as it is and uh we're not going to deal with mixed reality yet we just want to make sure that uh that the Tracking is set to hands only, and we also want to make sure, double check here, sometimes it won't say this, 
make sure the tracking origin type is set to floor level. This means that whatever we have at 0, 0, 0 is the floor. And when we stand up or when we put on our headset, it knows to put anything we put at 0, 0 at the floor and not at wherever your eyes were when you started. So very critical, very important. Make sure you have that on. Okay. So let's start building our little kind of play space, our little world to chill in. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is make a cube. So I'm just going to click over here and uh, let's add a cube. There's several ways to add objects, as you've probably seen from my other video. I'm going to do it from up here for this one. Just go 3D object cube. And it places it in who knows where. I'm just going to reset. Again, I click the three dots, reset, to bring it back to somewhere usable. Move it. I would like it to be in front of our camera. So if our camera is pointing this way, we can see that it is inside of the view. And if we go to game, we can see that it's there. Okay. But this cube is pretty massive. Okay. This cube is currently like a meter tall. We're going to be playing with this cube almost like it's a building block. So I worry if we make it that big it's not really going to be usable. Uh, you don't typically pick up meter by meter cubes on a day-to-day -day basis, and you definitely don't stack them. So let's make this much smaller, maybe like a tenth as large. I'm going to type 0.1 into each of these. If you're doing this in Unity 2021, you'll notice there'll be like a, a link thing here, and you can link them together and then just type it, type it once. But today I'm in 2020. Okay, so you can see our small little cube here. I think we should probably position this better. Uh, again, I'm flying around by right-clicking here, and then WASD to fly around. Also, E and Q can fly up and down. Okay, I'm going to move this closer. Each of these lines is about a meter, so how about, you know, around a meter in front of us? I'd like this cube, and I'd like it to be, you know, maybe... 0.8 meters above the ground. That seems fair. Um, measuring it right now, looking in my room. In fact, let's go all the way up to a meter. I think I think one meter height, one meter of height, sounds pretty good to me. Now, when we have this cube here, uh, it could be a pain in the butt to gotta lean over and pick it up off the ground over and over again. Let's make a shelf to uh, kind of support this cube. So I'm going to right-click on cube and go to duplicate. I'm going to rename this for our sanity's sake. I'm going to call it shelf. Okay. I'm going to move shelf down. And let's scale it a bit. You can just do this by hand however you want. You'll see up top there's different tools. I'm going to use the scale tool. And I'm going to expand our shelf this way, a little bit this way. I think it's a little bit too thick. So let's make it a little bit thinner. More like a shelf. That looks good to me. Cool. Now we've got our shelf. There's still something we're missing, though. Right now, there's no floor. And what I mean by that is when we go into pass-through, the, the quest doesn't know where the floor is. It, it doesn't keep track of it and, like, make an object. It doesn't look at all of the things in your room and build hard surfaces so that we can, you know, place the cube on a chair in your room or place the cube on whatever else in the room. Uh, at least not at the time that I am recording this. So we kind of have to just tell it that there should be an object there. And the most important object to exist is the floor. So I'm going to make a new object. I'm just going to right click over here, create 3D object plane. And it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Once more, I'm just going to reset it to zero, zero. And it's kind of centered on our camera. That's perfect. Um, but we're going to be in pass through. We don't want to see that we put an object on the floor. We just want to know that the thing is keeping track of the floor, that the floor has some collision surface. So let's remove the renderer from this plane. So now it will be see-through. We won't see it, but if the cube was to fall 
it will land on the floor. All right, a few more things to do before we're ready to test our app. I'm gonna go to the assets folder and in assets, I uh, gotta click the X to get there. Okay, in assets, I'd like us to make a new folder. I'm gonna call this materials. So I'm just gonna go to create folder materials. I like to keep things organized. I would highly recommend it uh, from one dev to another. Please keep your stuff organized. So here's materials in the materials folder. There's nothing here, but you may suspect from the name that we're going to fill this with a couple of custom materials. Again, from the basics class, you'd know that materials are something similar to a texture for a 3D object. They're not exactly a texture, they're more than a texture. They have all sorts of different properties. We're gonna make three really simple ones, all right? Gonna right click in here, create, down to material. I'm gonna name this one, mm, blue. You can name these whatever you want, all right? You don't, they don't have to be blue. Um, I've run this workshop several times and when I do, last time I, I had like a dark blue and I called it blug. Uh, and I made a dark green and I named it Greg. <laughs> you can just have fun, make up some colors. You'll see here, uh, we have our blue texture. It's clearly not blue right now, right? We wanna make it blue. To make it blue, we're gonna click up here on the right where there's this little color splotch and boom, we see this whole menu. I'm gonna make it blue, maybe a little bit dark-ish. I kind of like darker colors on my objects. That looks good to me. Here's our blue. So yeah, you feel free when you're making these objects. You don't need to make it blue. You can make whatever you want. You can choose all sorts of colors, make whatever you, you'd like, all right? There is one exception though. Humor me in this. We all need to have a red material of some sort, some kind of red, because you'll, you'll see, you'll see. So I'm, I'm gonna make a I'm not gonna make a red right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a uh, blue. We already did. Let's do let's do green. Green sounds good to me. Uh, wait for people who may be red green colorblind. Actually, how about blue and yellow? Yellow is good. Yellow is a good color. Mm hmm. Or perhaps like a maybe a gold, like an orangey yellow. That sounds nice. So I'll go with gold. I'm gonna click over here, make it a little bit more orangey. That seems good. Goldish, vaguely. All right. And finally, as I said, we wanna make sure we make one red. Red. And I'm gonna make this one a nice red, not too bright, just something good. Feel free to do whatever you want, but I'd recommend just making, make it red. It'll, I think it, it works best with what we're gonna be doing today. Just have at least one red. Now for the color of this cube, that's what we're gonna do with these, uh, color it anything but red. It's up to you. I think I'm gonna start with a blue cube. I like the look of that. Seems good to me. And there's only one thing left to do for our cube. Our cube right now, if we were to run this, we would see that it doesn't, fall because it doesn't have physics at all. It's just going to sit there in the air. There's no way to collide with it. Nothing. We need to give it physics to give any object physics in unity. We just add a rigid body, rigid body. Just type that in Add component rigid body. Don't click rigid body 2d and we can leave all this as is. So at this moment, if we were to run the application, we will see that there is a cube sitting on top of our shelf. We'll be able to look around and we'll be able to see our hands. So let's build to our headset right now. Like let's, let's check it out. Let's try it out. Okay. So all that, that all we ought to do for that is first save, save frequently and often. You never know when you're going to lose your work and let's go to file build settings. I saved with control S by the way, be command S on Mac. Same shortcut as every single software you've ever used. Okay. 
we're in our build settings now. We want to build and run this on our headset. However, it's important to note we need to get our headset connected. So assuming you went through all of the steps to set up the debug, or not the debug, to set up the developer mode, what we have to do is get our headset plugged in. So I'm gonna take my Quest, I'm gonna take my Oculus Link cable, I'm gonna plug it in. And here, let me give you a quick view. Let's go back to the camera view. There's a mic in the way, but <laughs> I'm gonna quickly put this on. I'm gonna plug it in. If you can see, there's a port over here. You will need a USB-C cord. It can be USB-C to USB-A, or it can be just USB-C to USB-C. The headset comes with USB-C to USB-C cable, so you could use that if your computer has USB-C ports. What's gonna happen though, when you plug it in, is you're going to see something pop up that says allow USB debugging, question mark. On this, you can click allow, or you can click always allow from this computer. I, I You can't see this menu at this moment, but I'm telling you right now, it's gonna say allow and always allow from this computer choose whichever you'd like. I'm going to click always allow because it will minimize our number of clicks in the future. But then after you do that, it's going to ask you to allow it again. If you chose to allow and not always allow for this computer, you would have one more allow statement popping up right now. Three allows in total that you have to click. All that we're doing is giving the computer access to our headset so that we can push our apps to it. Anyway, take this off and we will get back to Unity. Alrighty. So we're gonna build to our quest. One thing that's critical when building to your quest from Unity is you need to make sure that Unity even knows that your quest is connected. So over here in Run Device, I'm gonna click Refresh. I'm gonna take a look and there's my Oculus Quest. I'm gonna click on it and set it here. You're gonna notice every time I every time I go to build to my headset, I'm clicking refresh and I'm checking to make sure that it's connected. Because if I mess up and I don't connect it, then it could get annoying and it's gonna be really hard to follow these instructions if you don't make sure that your quest is connected every time. So again, refresh that. Then we're gonna go to build and run here. And you can choose anywhere to put it. I have a folder on my computer for builds. So I will just put it here, my builds folder. And you can name it whatever you'd like. It's not really going to impact too much. So I'm going to call this one um, workshop demo pass through. Call it anything you'd like. Make sure it's set to APK and click save. And when you do that, you're gonna see that it's gonna start building. And welcome to another wait. <laughs> this wait may not take that long, but it can take a while sometimes depending on your computer. Um, however, after we've done this wait one time, every sequential time afterwards is going to be so much faster. Uh, it has to do a lot of compiling right now, but once it's already done it, then it's just simply just gonna make a small change and then compile that. So the first time is the longest, after that it will not take that long. So catch you on the other side of this loading bar. All right, so the app has been built. Time for me to show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna switch over to this and I'm gonna cast it so that you can watch uh, what it looks like through my headset. Oopsie, let me get back to that. Here we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna unplug my headset from the computer. It doesn't need to be plugged in. We've already built it. You can leave it plugged in if you'd like. And made with Unity is showing up. Um, time for me to cast so I can show you what it looks like. All right, so you can see now. Let me uh, full screen this for you, make it nice and clear. Okay, so here's what it'll look like. At this moment, if you were to compile it, it should look almost exactly like this. There is a glitch that can happen occasionally that your hands get tracked as controllers. All you have to do to fix this is tap the sleep button on the right side of the, or the power button on the right side of the uh, headset, and then tap it again to turn back out of sleep mode and you will see that your hands come back into place. Another really important shortcut is to, if you point your hands towards you, you'll see that these interface components show up. I'm gonna pinch here and hold and I'm gonna move up to recenter view. And if you stand for a second, it will recenter the view where you need, which is really helpful when working on this project. So, cool. We can see if I walk over, and my, I might get a little bit away from the microphone, so pardon if I'm a little quiet, but when we walk over, I can't actually touch this cube, right? There's no way for me to interact with it. So let's fix that. So uh, let's fix that. There's also something else you might see right now, which is we're in like a virtual space. And where we want to be is in a pass-through mode. That's kind of the idea of this workshop. So to switch it into pass-through, we're, we're going to be changing some settings. All right. So for now, I'm going to close out of this. I close out of apps by tapping and clicking quit. And for now, I'll just take off my headset. And let's go back to Unity. So back in Unity, let's make those changes we just talked about. All right. First things first, let's add in our, um, let's add in pass-through. So all we have to do to add in pass-through is we need to go into this rig, into OVR camera rig right here. We're going to change, let me just double check that everything's capturing, it is. We're going to change our uh, thing down here from pass-through capability enabled being off to pass through capability enabled being on and you'll see that that turns on this section all we need to click down here is enable pass through and there's one more step in here at least we need to go to add component and type in pass through uh, it's called OVR pass through layer sorry you could also just type OVR pass through layer pass through layer here it is OVR pass through layer we're gonna add that in and we need to change one thing about it right now it's set to overlay which means it will show us the pass through over everything else we are doing which means we won't see anything we won't see the table we won't see the cube nothing we'll just see the pass through instead we're gonna switch it to underlay which means it's behind everything however there's a notable point with that which is it's behind everything. It's even behind the skybox. So when you look out here, you see how there's an, a horizon? This is a skybox around us. We need to get rid of it if we want to see pass through. To get rid of the skybox, you're going to go to Window, Rendering, Lighting, and you should see something like this pop up. Then you're going to go to Environment, and you're going to go to skybox material I'm gonna click the little circle next to it and we're just gonna type none and then double click on that and boom no more skybox what at this point right now we will have working video pass through going on in the oculus quest however you will not be able to see it for the duration of this demo because it's only visible inside of the headset that's just kind of a quirk with how this works there's no way to show other people the pass-through. Uh, the only way to do it is to download a bunch of software to see the exact screen view. It's not worth it. Just trust me. When you're going to see darkness, 
it's going to just look pure pitch black that in fact I can see my room around me. Anyway, on to the next step, right? There were two steps I wanted to hit here. We wanted to uh, turn on pass through and we wanted to make it so that we can interact with the cube. So the way that interactions work in OVR toolkit kind of thing is you need to add interactors to uh, your hands or your controllers and then you need to add interactable components to the objects that you want to interact with. So to do that, we're going to first start by adding these interactor components. And these are all done underneath this object, input OVR. So in here, we have our controllers and our hands. Today, we're really going to focus on our hands. So let's start with our hands here. We're going to go to our left hand and our right hand, and we're going to open up hand interactors and hand interactors on both of them. So we can see here that these currently have a poke interactor in them, but we want to grab. So as you might assume, we're going to type in something very similar. We're going to type in hand grab interactor. I believe here it is right here. See hand grab interactor.prefab. This is the first half of being able to grab things. We're going to take it, drag it, and drop it onto the hand interactors object that's inside of both the left and the right hand. And we are going to now have to set it up. What I mean by that is if we take a look over here, there's this script called hand ref that's on, it's on both of them. And it's looking for which hand we have placed this in. So this one's on the right hand. I'm going to drag the right hand object into that slot. Same over here on hand grab interactor in the left hand. I'm going to drag the left hand into that slot. Okay, there's still another step. In the hand interactors object, there's actually a list of interactor drivers. If we click here, we can see the list only has one element in it the poke interactor. We need to add the grab interactor to it. So I'm going to drag the grab interactor over. I'm going to drop it right on the word interactor drivers and you'll see it'll add it straight into our list. Do not drop it in here. Drop it right on the word. Trust me, you will cause a bug if you, <laughs> if you drop it on here because we're going to need this poke interactor later. Okay, we we'll do the same. We can do the same thing over here. Just grab the hand grab interactor drop it on the word interactor drivers and boom there it is at this point our hands are able to grab things however our cube isn't able to be grabbed we need to make it grabbable so we'll move on to that we're clicking on the cube uh, you know I'm gonna change these right now it's scaling I just I just went up here and changed it to movement because uh, I'm always afraid when the scaling ones are up okay in our cube, we want to add the grabbable component. Just type grabbable. And uh, one thing I like to have on in here is transfer hand on second grab. Just makes things a lot nicer. Uh, it's kind of, it's exactly what it says. If you had the object in your hand and you grabbed it while you're holding it in the other hand, it will switch it to the hand that you're grabbing it with from the hand it was in. Um, it's like passing an object between both of your hands. It's like how it works in the real world, right? So um, what we next need to add, though, is another component. We need to give it the option to grab it with our hand. It's really weird how it works like this. You have to add a grabbable, and then you have to add a separate script, depending on if you want to be able to pick it up with your hand or with your controller. Today, we're really going to focus on hand. So I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to type hand grab interactable. Boom. Here's hand grab interactable. You can see it's got a lot of different stuff in it. It should automatically take in the transform of the cube, the rigid body of the cube, the grabable of the cube. If any of these fields here are empty, you got to make sure you fill them in with the object that it's attached to. Okay. Now, 
there's also this field here called physics grabbable. And you want, if your object has physics, which our cube does, you need to have a physics grabbable as well as a normal grabbable, as well as a hand grab interactable script in order for it to work. I know it's complicated. Just follow and uh, it'll work for you. So uh, we're gonna add a physics grabbable. Just go to add component, physics grabbable. There it is. Click it, it's in, it's good. It's good how it is. Maybe you don't want it to scale mass with size. I like scale mass with size. That seems to make the most sense to me. It, it works realistically for me. Um, but what we do want to change is hand grabbing. There's this whole thing about like recording like points on it and gestures and poses. We're not really concerned about that today. I want us to be able to pick up these blocks like they are real objects and you can naturally kind of pinch on them and pick them up from any part along the object. So to do that, we got to turn off snap right here. Turn it to none. What this means is when we grab the cube, it's going to grab it from exactly where we grab it. It's not going to snap the cube to have us grabbing onto its special grab point, which by default is the middle of the cube. Um, so with snap type none, we can grab the corner and it will let us just kind of grab it from the corner. Super nice. Okay. Now we have pass through and we have hand grabbing abilities. So let's try it out. All right, same thing as last time, plug in your quest. And whenever you plug in a quest, you always have to go through that same allow dialogue over and over again. So maybe you leave your quest plugged in in order to avoid that. I just like to unplug mine personally, so. All right. It's been, it's, it's now enabled, it's connected. I'm gonna go to file, build settings. Do not click build and run. Don't do it. Just click build settings. And we're gonna refresh again, as I said. We gotta always make sure that our quest is connected before we build and run. I'm gonna build and run. I'm gonna save exactly the same thing. We're gonna replace it because we have a new version. And boom, it's gonna build. You're gonna see now, it's gonna go so much faster. It's gonna go so much faster. Uh, it still could take a little bit, so I will jump to the end. So yeah, there we go. That took almost one minute exactly, and uh, it took 51 seconds. You can see at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna test it out now. I'm gonna unplug my quest. I'm gonna go over so I can cast it so you can see what I'm seeing. And let me show you what's up. So once again, it'll always show you the made with unity thing at the start and uh, mine currently has glitched out a little bit this this tends to happen when you first install the app um, with hand tracking uh, it's currently not showing my hands as tracked so all I'm gonna do as I've said before is uh, press the power button once and then press it again and uh, now everything's loaded it's time for me to cast real quick so that you all can see what I am doing let me just cast to my computer. And here we go. Fantastic. You all can see nice and clear. Full screen it for you. Okay. One thing you may notice right now. Remember when I mentioned when we're do when we're using pass through, you're not going to see that I can see the pass through. So right now I can see my room through the headset and I can see this shelf and these cubes overlaid inside of my room. So uh, here's the hands. And what do you know? If we go over to grab the cube, we can pick it up, drop it. We can't really throw it because uh, currently there's no velocity tracking systems built into the grabbing mechanisms that Meta provides, uh, but that may change in the future. All right, so that, that's what we have right now. I think it's time to add in distance grab or distance selection so that we can try out different ways of interacting. So let's get to it. Back to Unity we go. 
All right, so we're back in here again, and the final. So the the, the net. Blah, blah, blah. Alrighty, we're back in Unity again, and what we want to do now is we're going to build some means of interacting at a distance. So that uses something called a ray cast mechanism. To get our ray for our hands, we're going to go right over here, open these all back up like we had earlier, you know, back to the interactors and all of that. We need to add a new interactor to our hands. This one. Might be able to guess it. It's ray interactor. Actually, I believe it's called hand ray interactor. There it is. If you were using controllers, you would be doing the same thing, but you would be dropping on the controller ray interactor. They're both very different. I'm going to add the hand ray interactor to our hand interactors of both hands. And I'm going to do the same exact thing we did before. So I'm going to do it kind of fast now because we've done it once. Again, I drag the respective hand into the hand ref for each of them. And I go into the interactors list and I drag it onto the words so that it gets added to the list. And do the same thing again over here. Okay, cool. Hand rate interactors, they're set up. We're good to go. But we don't have anything to interact with with our rays. So we need to make some objects that are ray interactable. And now I found through testing that uh, currently at least making something ray interactable and grabbable uh, can cause some issues. But if you're doing them two distinct objects, then it works pretty well. So what we're going to do, I think let's let's use some spheres to select. To do that, I'm just going to go I'm going to go to game object 3D object sphere. And wow, that is very far in the distance. Let's reset it. Now it is right here. Let's move this sphere over here. You know, some nice big spheres will make it easy for us to select them. So I definitely place them a bit of a distance behind your table or your shelf. Okay, I'm gonna make uh, we'll start with one sphere, that's what I'm putting on the left, and then we're going to duplicate it into a second sphere. Okay, so let's do that. Um, our, our first sphere we got to set up. The functionality we're going for here is we want our spheres to change the cube colors to whatever the color of the sphere is that we're using. And we're going to do this without any scripts, which means it's going to be a little bit clunky. So. Let's get to it. All we got to do, uh, our cube is currently blue, so if we were to change it to another color, perhaps that would be gold. Okay, that seems fine. Uh, but <laughs> our sphere isn't doing anything right now, right? It's You can look at the components, it's just a sphere. We need to make it so we can interact with this sphere, with our ray. So you may have guessed how to interact with a ray, is we type ray interactable add that in and you'll see it has a spot for a collider here don't forget to add this i have forgotten so many times we need a collider or a surface so that it knows when we are pointing at it or not so i'm going to grab the sphere collider here and drag it and drop it into collider down here okay now we need to make it so that we can actually do things when we interact and that means adding this other script called unity event or sorry interactable it's called interactable unity event wrapper yeah i know it's 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 a long it's a long name if you start typing it it'll show up okay so here is our interactable unity event wrapper but it needs to know what interactable it's viewing see here it says interactable view we're going to drag ray interactable into this box so that it knows it's looking for our ray interactable to see what to do. Now, all we really care about here is when you select the, the sphere. We don't care about when you 
release the sphere. We have things for if you're hovering over it, unhovering, blah, 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 blah. All we're concerned about today is when you click on the sphere, we want the cubes to change color to match the sphere. Now, you may have heard me slip a second right there. I said cubes, right? I think we should make more than one cube so that we can have some fun using these. So I'm going to take the cube and I'm going to duplicate it. You can make as many cubes as you'd like, but be aware this step that we are doing right now will become harder the more cubes you choose to build. So I'm going to go with three. It, if you stick with one, it's going to be really easy, but with uh, three, it's only three times the work, <laughs> but it's not that much work. So anyway, I'm going to duplicate this cube again, get our cube two. I'm keeping them organized over here so I can keep them together and drag cube two over here. This looks good, like a good position for our cube two. And yeah, there are our cubes. Our cubes are good to go, but our sphere is not. So each of these cubes, they're an exact copy, right? So they all are grabbable. They're all everything. What they need is to be changed color when we click the sphere. So if we go to the sphere, when we select the sphere, which is when we click on the sphere, it will do whatever happens in when select. So I'm going to click the plus button. I'm going to click the plus button three times, in fact. So we have three of these boxes. And I'm going to dra drag cube into each of them. I'm going to drag each of the cubes into each of them, sorry. Cube, cube one, cube two. Right? And now under each of these, we want to change its material. That's the thing we're trying to do. So you go to mesh renderer material material don't choose material shared material i know it can be easy to mix them up material material and i'm gonna do the same thing over and over again mesh renderer material material mesh renderer material material and now we want to pick the material we want to change it to well this is the gold sphere so we're gonna put gold as the material that we want to change these cubes to okay so we've done it all that we need to do now is uh, just a, a little something. I think you may notice that if we right now, if we change everything to gold, there's no way to get back to blue. So I'm going to duplicate this sphere. Now that we've made all of our stuff on it, I'm going to duplicate this sphere. Boom. Second sphere. And this new sphere, I'm going to color blue. And importantly, I'm going to go into its script and I'm going to replace all of these colors with blue so that now when we click on it, it sets each of them to blue. Okay. Now, I don't want us to have to keep building this over and over again. I think there's one more fun interaction we can add in here to just, you know, finish this off, kind of put put the the ribbon on it, so to speak. And that is a big red button like Alex where did your what do you 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 expect me to build a big red button just like out of nowhere no <laughs> just type it in big red button it comes built in in the oculus integration and we want to pick this one you'll see one of them is a prefab and one of them's an FBX or just a 3d model we want the prefab take that prefab and just drop it somewhere on your shelf preferably somewhere you can reach so i'm gonna put it here uh there's so much garbage in the way i can't tell where it is i'm gonna toggle off the gizmos by clicking up here so that i can see th past it let's see how high is this hovering above it's hovering above the 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 surface let's drag it down a little bit that looks good to me cool 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 all right so now we have our big red button what does it do? Why is it here? Uh, well, we have a big red button. Remember when I mentioned uh, that we were saving red for something? Well, that's now. So first thing, we don't want to overwrite what a big red button is. So I'm just going to prefab unpack completely on the big red button to unwrap it. And now I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go to button. I know there's a whole bunch of different button things. Get the one that's just button. And you'll see 
look, it has an interactable Unity event wrapper, just like what we did with our spheres. And I'm going to add a couple of when select. So three more when selected things here. And we're going to do exactly what we did earlier. Uh, this time, though, yeah, let's grab uh, our cube one, our cube normal, cube one, cube two. And we want to mesh render material, mesh renderer, material, mesh renderer, material. And the material we choose is red. That's why I made you make red. Because when we press our big red button, I want everything to turn red. I think it's fun. <laughs> it makes more sense when you press the red button. And uh, you'll notice that the button uh, yeah, has a poke interactable on it already. And you'll notice that our hands have poke interactors on them already. Which means it's going to naturally automatically let us poke it. We didn't have to build the interactors and stuff in. That's why we don't have to do it. It, it. it already has it there for us. But you know what time it is. It's time to test it out. We've built the entire thing. Let's play with our new creation. So I'm going to save. I'm going to go to file. Build settings. I'm going to plug my headset back in. I'm going to take a look in the headset. And I'm going to allow connections to it so that you can write things to the headset. I'm gonna go over here and refresh to make sure that it recognizes that it's connected and I'm gonna build and run. Send it and here we go. And I'll catch y'all on the other side of this uh, setup. Okay, so here we are back in the app that we just built and let's take it for a spin. So let's see my hands. You Once again, you can't see my room. When you're doing this on your own one, you'll be able to see your room through it. I'm going to go and uh, first let's pick up some cubes. We can stack our cubes. We can do whatever we want. We don't have to just pinch script them either. Ooh, there goes one on the floor. Let me grab it. You can grab it with your palm, you can grab it with your fingertips, you can grab it with like whatever fingertips you'd want, whatever fingertips you choose. Okay, so now remember the new things we added about selecting? See how as I move my hand around, the ray gets cast onto these spheres. Okay, well if I choose, if I click by pinching, if I, you'll see that like it turns into almost like a turns from a teardrop shape into kind of like a line. So when we when we pinch when we're pointing at something, it selects it. I'm gonna pinch now on the yellow sphere or the gold sphere, and look, our cubes are now gold. Let me make a fun stack out of them so we can see it cleanly. And if we want to go back to blue, click on blue. Now. But you're all waiting to hit the big red button. Let's give it a go. It even has sounds that come built in. I do love hitting the big red button. So you'll notice that it uses poke interaction, not like a touch thing. And since it uses poke interaction, it only works with our fingertip. It only works with our index fingertip because that's what you poke with, apparently. It's what they decided, at least, that you poke with. But yeah, here's our creation. And that is the simple app that we're making in this, in this workshop. Yeah. So let's uh, jump back out so I can give some closing uh, notes to help you all out. Hey, so that was the contents of the workshop. Once again, we covered how to put apps onto your quest, how to give apps pass-through capabilities, how to interact with things using your hands, how to make it so that you can interact with objects in general, how you can do distance interaction, near interaction, uh, poke, grab, and ray interactions uh, on the quest, and yeah. At this point, you should have 
an application on your quest that is the app that you have just made. And yeah, uh, hope you have some fun with it. Hope it helps to be a baseline for maybe future work that you're going to do. So yeah, thank you for attending my workshop. I hope you have a great day. See ya.